Hello, welcome back. Today is Sunday, January, no, Sunday, get it together, girl. Sunday, February 26th, 2023, and I'm so happy to be here today. <laughs> um, last night was a little rough for me. Look, I went to sleep, I don't know what time I went to sleep, to be honest. It probably was like 10 or 11, and I woke up. Like either one or two, I still don't remember because it's like whenever I wake up, I try not to open my eyes and look at the clock so I won't be um, disturbed by like the blue light and, and then be drawn into my phone so I don't look at the clock. Um, so I don't know if it was one or two o'clock. Um, but when I finally did say, you know what, obviously I'm not going to go back to sleep. When I finally did open my iPad, um, I didn't go back to sleep until like five o'clock. So I went to sleep at 5 o'clock, and then about 7 o'clock this morning, I like, boom, 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 somebody, knock on my door. So I decided to keep sleeping, because look, I don't take unannounced, unexpected guests. You know what I'm saying? So I guess they didn't get the memo that that's not what I do, so they went boom, 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 boom again. Anyway, handled that, <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? came, went back into my bedroom, and I was like, uh, I want to go back to sleep. So I asked the Lord to let me go back to sleep. Here I was laying there with my eyes closed, and I was just, I decided to just pray and meditate, and then hopefully it'll let me go back to sleep. Nope. Just woke up. I just like did. So I got up, I showered, uh, I made my juice, and I read a little bit. So I wanted to share with you some of my thoughts from my current reading from the book, The Power of Concentration. And this book is by Theron Q. Dumont. That sounds pretty good. So um, I'm on chapter five and I've been reading this for a little bit, but what I wanted to do with this particular book is take time to actually read each lesson and study it. And so with each lesson, as I go through, um, I'm highlighting, taking notes in the book, but then the next day, um, I go into my iPad and I write down what I, um, I go back and like, let me start over. Okay. So like, let's say today, let's say I was reading lesson one, I'm reading lesson one, highlight, you know, write notes there. And then the next day I'll go back to read the highlighted portions in my notes and then, um, and then allow those words to connect with me and how it applies to my life and then I go back into my iPad and write you know whatever it is that I've connected with in that so that's how I decided to engage with this particular book this is a good book so far so I thought I would share with you some of my thoughts or notes from at least um I have maybe the first three lessons is that good all right, so um, the power of concentration, let me just give you a synopsis of what it's, a, well, hey, the title tell you what's about is the power of concentration. Okay, so, um, you know what, I'm just going to do lesson one and probably won't even finish it because I looked at my notes and it's a lot of notes. So lesson one is concentration finds the way. And I'm just going to read the first paragraph of this lesson. It says, everyone has two natures. One wants us to advance and the other wants to pull us back. The one that we cultivate and concentrate on decides what, what we are at the end. Both natures are trying to gain control. The will alone decides the issue. So a man by one supreme effort of the will may change his whole career and almost accomplish miracles. You may be that man. 
You can be if you will to be, for will can find a way or make one. So that was the first paragraph. And of course, it was a lot more stuff that was said. But um, basically, when it, it said that um, we have two natures. So I have two natures. And what I realized is that I have this higher self and lower self, right? The higher, most divine self, the God in me. And also the brute, the animalistic, the lower self. And it's like every day is this, in every moment in some cases, it's this thing of this pool of one versus the other. So we talked about the two natures, right? So I'm going to continue to talk about the divine self and the animalistic self, right? And so when I read that uh, in the book, it says it is a matter of choice whether we allow our diviner self to control us or whether we will be controlled by the brute within us. So that made me think of Joshua 24, 15, where it says, choose you this day whom you will serve. So every day I have to make a decision. Actually, every moment I have to make a decision and the behavior and the actions and the thoughts. Am I going to allow this to serve my higher self or the lower animalistic self? So um, then I have to think about whichever one that is being served is going to be the most satisfying. And the one that I'm not serving is going to feel be neglected and deprived. So which behavior, what each of my behaviors, my habits, and my actions, either my higher or lower self is being served. And each of them has a different result. So then it's like, okay, well, how do I know if I'm serving my higher self or my lower self? It's by the fruit. It's by the fruit that we're producing. Go to Matthew 7, 20, and it says, wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. So I need to be observant of the results that I see in my life in order to determine if my actions are serving my greater good. Simply, like if I look at myself and I'm like, oh my gosh, you look fat, you are out of shape, like you can't breathe, like your skin is hard, like all these things I can see in the physical, that's the fruit. And obviously that means something it's out of line. Something that I'm doing each and every day is serving my lower self because of the fruit that I see. And I mean, I don't like want to make it physical, but that was just the easier um, thing that I connected with. So if I want a different result, I must consider behaviors that decide um, that actually serve my higher self and will myself to it. And there's really no confusion in the things that are godly versus ungodly. And, and I'm not talking about godly versus ungodly in the aspect of sin versus um, not sinning. I'm talking about right versus wrong. I think people that don't even know God knows we have that thing within us that can tell us what's right and what's wrong. And, and the results that we see is so obvious. Things that are godly, things that are right beautiful they're divine they're t together baby these dogs just be barking i don't know why i mean i guess that's what dogs do bark um can y'all hear that i just assume y'all can hear all this okay so anyway um but ungodly things they real raggedy and thrown together so you can tell whether or not you are in line with serving your greater self by the fruits that you produce so it, um, one of the things in the book, it also says a person can break a habit just the moment he masters the I will. So basically, when you decide, when I decide, I want to change something, I make my mind up, that's when I can break a habit. Now, of course, there's some scientific, psychological things and uh, other practices that we can put in place to make this better. But the first thing we got to do is make our mind up about it. Um, I remember about 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago, I first heard the, the statement skill versus will. And it, I still use it sometimes, but I try not to because it's so overused. But skill versus will means that, you know, either you have the skill or lack the skill, you don't know how to do something, right? And so if you don't know how to do something, I can show you how to do it. Versus will, you know how to do it, but you just don't want to do it, right? I believe that if we have the will, God is going to give us the skill that we need in order to work that thing out as long as that we're choosing to serve him through that work, 
will is always going to trump skill. That's why it really doesn't matter how old I am. Um, it doesn't matter uh, what I've done in my past. It doesn't matter the color of my skin. It doesn't matter that I'm a female. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. It's will versus skill. Because what really matters is who I choose to serve me this day. Is it my higher self or my lower self? That's what truly matters. Um, and then I think a lot of times we believe that we missed our opportunity for things. When I think about age and stuff, um, you know, being 44 years old, it could, I don't know, half my life over. I don't know how long I'm going to be living. But I think at this age, it just feels like you're getting closer to being old <laughs> than you are young. I guess that's how aging goes. Anyway, um, but a lot of us at this age may feel like we have missed our opportunity to do things. So um, I believe that um, I ain't missed nothing. Uh, I'm trying to find this in the book. It says, so one of the things I highlighted in the book, it says opportunity never seeks us. Opportunity never seeks us. We must seek it. I don't know. My tongue got tied and y'all understood that. Let me try it again. It says opportunity never seeks us. We must seek it. So again, I haven't missed my opportunity for anything because opportunity doesn't come. Opportunity is created. When I read that, I was reminded of Matthew 7, 7, which says, ask and you shall receive. No, that ain't what it said. Is that what it said? Hold on. <laughs> it said, ask and it, it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. So it tells me, it gives me direction. So I got to take action. It says, ask, seek, knock. These are the actions that I must take. So an opportunity can be found if I seek. Nowhere in there did it say the, stand right there and let the opportunity come to you. So if it's not something that comes to me, I can't miss it. If it's something I have to do, um, like as far as ask, seek, and knock, I can take those actions. So no matter if I'm 44, 24, 4, or 84, guess what? I create the opportunity each and every time. So I got to make up my mind about what I want, and then I make that opportunity for myself. I'm about to wrap this up. Another thing from the book is there is only one way to accomplish anything, and that is to go ahead and do it. A man may accomplish almost anything today if he just sets his heart on doing it and let nothing interfere with his progress. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, I was thinking about how right now in life, I'm not 100% pleased with how things are. Well, no, I'm not going to say I'm not pleased with how things are. I'm not pleased with what I'm not doing. Because I tell you, I got so much, so much, so much, so much inside of me. I just want to get it out. But I guess because it is so much, I just don't know which direction to go. Can y'all hear me over this dog? Okay. So I know, I know my... That dog made the man. Okay. <laughs> known my entire life that there is more I have so much in me I got so much in me I know there's more and when I think about my most frustrating moments in my life is when I am actually quiet and I think about you ain't doing nothing you supposed to be doing not a doggone thing you just around here just doing regular stuff you just living like you just existing like you getting up you going to work you come home, you do this, you talk talk to people every once in a while. Like, that ain't life. Like, that, that is not my purpose. And so it's frustrating. It makes me feel very um, displeased with myself to know these things and to allow this to continue to happen. But um, I'm, I've decided that if I'm going to have displeasure in my life, the displeasure should come from me actually being in the middle of doing the work that I need to be doing and on this road to success and having a setback. Let, let that be the displeasure. Let me have a setback on this road to success because as long as I'm moving on this road, at least I'm going somewhere. So let's say I run out of gas on this road. Okay, it's okay. We'll get some gas. But guess what? When I gas up, I'm going to get back on the road and I'm going to keep on going. But right now, 
Well, before what I was sitting there doing is just sitting there even looking at the content. I would God, I don't even know which direction to go. I don't know what type of gas can go get in the car and just start riding. So if I'm gonna be displeased, it's not gonna be because I'm frustrated that I didn't get in the car and I don't know what to do when I get in the car. I'm gonna get in the car and I'm gonna start riding and let them setbacks be a dis uh, disappointment. But guess what I'm gonna do? I'm still gonna get there and keep on going. Uh, I think that's all I'm gonna share from lesson one. I got a lot more notes and things that, that came to mind, but I think um, that's pretty much all I want to share today. So, again, the name of the book is Power of Concentration. I'll link it down below. I do recommend it. I'm on lesson five now, and um, I'm taking my time reading it, getting some gems. Some things are a reminder. Some things I didn't know. Some things are, oh, it's worth the read for me. So, uh, what I'm about to do now I don't even know, but I'll be back. I am about to eat a mango as I boil my three bitters. So again, I'm on the Yaki Awaken three bitters, and this would be my fourth night. And um, with it being my fourth night, that means that I would actually, I'm cutting this all wrong. Oh, no. um, with it being my fourth night, that means that, oh, this thing juicy as all on it. Let me get some of this. Mm, 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 mm. I'm hungry. <laughs> I am hungry. Anyway, with it being my fourth night for the bitters, um, I'm thinking about this mango. That means I have to use a new batch so I can reuse each of the herbs three days so now this is the fourth day I need to restart it but anyway I'm gonna eat this mango wait a little bit drink my bitters and then I'm gonna go to sleep I hope y'all had a great day talk to you tomorrow take care